Is uh, Kobe Boyce done and to improve himself, uh, you know, to be where he is a year later? Yeah, he's playing with a lot more confidence. I think um, beforehand there was a little bit of uncertainty, and I don't think I don't think it's anything to do with the kid. I just think that he's had some people in front of him, and uh, you know, he's kind of always been in his role. But now we kind of put him in the, in the spotlight. Uh, and I think if you can go out and, in, in my opinion, and, and cover the guys that we have on the offensive side of the ball, that you know, and do that consistently, that gives you some confidence too. So I, I like how we, you know, he attacks the football. He's very athletic. He's long, um, and he can make plays. So excited to watch him play. What about Jalen Green on the other same, side? Really the same way. You know, those guys in the beginning of camp. I mean, you think about some of the guys, and you know, the Collins and and the Malcolms, the bigger body guys. You know, when they in the springtime, maybe not as so, but you know, as fall camp, gaining some confidence, finding a ball because they're long enough and tall enough to go up and jump with those guys. And, and I think, you know, that that position is so much about confidence and then letting uh, plays go that maybe you get beat on and moving on to the next one. So both guys have a great camps. Excited to watch them play. Coach, so at linebacker, do you feel like you know who your top, you know, three or five guys are? Or is it still going to take you some time? No, I mean, I, in my opinion, I think they've sorted themselves out. I think you, it's kind of representative uh, to the depth chart. Uh, we're we're going to swing in some guys, you know, uh, what uh, you know, McCulloch and Joe, but I think you're going to see a little bit of swing here and there with Delhi and and Jawan. I think they've established, they've earned the right to play. I mean, that was probably the biggest thing. And then you'll see some guys, uh, the you know, the Tillmans, the Caleb Johnsons, the Bendas, all those guys that are represented on that depth chart. I, you're going to see them play in this ball game, not necessarily all the time at linebacker, but you'll see them on teams. What did Jawan do? Uh, he's physical. You know, he's physical and he's. Uh, very instinctive and um, very proud of him of how fast he picked up this package because there's a lot of stuff going on, you know, and he came in here and he learned it. But uh, he he has very, very good vision, and that's the one thing that's really impressive. Instincts and vision will help you. Now it's to get with Yance. That's the next phase of this thing because he only had a month or so when he got here to, to, to work with uh, Coach McKnight and his staff. So we feel like he's going to get better athletically, which is going to make him a better ball player. Do you feel like you're doing some things with this group, the speed, whatever, that you you yourself haven't even done in the past? No, if we've done stuff like this, uh, the, the original roots of this thing was to try to get as many fast guys on this. It's just, you know, sometimes you just don't have the personnel to match what you want to do. And I think through recruiting and through some of the guys, really uh, the, the safety positions, because uh, Craig has done such a good job of recruiting, there's a whole bunch of guys there that you know, we need to get on the field, through, either through rotation or through packages. And I think that afforded the luxury to be able to do some of the stuff uh, that we will do. Now that, it, now that the game week is here, I mean, how many times do you envision a six, seven, or eight man DB? Well, it depends. You know, you know it, it's difficult to, to, sit, to sit here. And, and, and like I said, it's a lot of protection of the program and protection of the stuff that we're doing. But right. as I told you guys beforehand, um, there's going to be situations where we're going to get our best playmakers on the field and they're fast enough and, and, uh, and they can play the football that we're going to get them out there. But I'll be able to kind of expand on that stuff a little bit later as we get into week two. Yeah. Once you brought up the safety position, yeah. uh, Brandon and Caden, yeah. what, what do they bring to the field to help some of these younger guys? Well, their work ethic and their professionalism is number one because a lot of these guys come in here and they feel like you come in the building, you kind of go through your meetings, you go out to practice, and you go home. And, and, and like Brandon's such a pro, he'll be in Caden's same way. They'll be the first people in the building to get just, you know, their legs right or sit in a cold tub just to be proactive about, you know, the, the next day's practice. So they sit down and then they're, they're their first people in the meeting rooms and they're the first people. So all these young kids, they're, they're looking for habits for guys that they respect, especially guys like those guys are very productive. So that's where it helps us the most. It's not, you know, as a coach, you say, hey, listen, you got to put a little bit extra time and do this stuff. And it, it, sometimes it just goes in one ear and out the other one. But when they watch our dudes, like our major league guys and, and just their routine, that's where it helps the most. You talked a lot about the speed. How would you gauge the physical nature? It's been good. Other? Yeah, it's been good. I, you know the, you know how we we practice around here, and, and and guys have embraced that. So I mean, yeah, I've said this a million times beforehand. You you kind of earn the right to 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 go on the field, and you got to prove your physicality 
and you know effort's non-negotiable. If you're if you're going to be a dog, you're, you're not you're not going to be on the field. But the physicality is the last notch. So you're being judged not only by the coach and staff, but to me personally, the, the locker room doesn't lie. So if they know that you're not going to hit people and you're not going to do that part, then you know we, we that's protect the culture around here, and you're not going to play. So if they're out in that field; they've already proved that. But it's been good, you know, especially through fall camp. What stands out about Louisiana Tech? Well, experience. I mean, you, know, you you go through there too deep, and I think everybody on the offensive side has been redshirted. So, you know, they, they got all these older guys, and that's how you run a program. To me, you're able to do that. And then you look at the core there, you know, from guard to guard. I um, mean, they're guys that played multiple games. They've got a quarterback with three years under his belt. They've got great outside receivers, um, and they got running backs that run hard, and they get the ball in space. So it's, uh, you know, it's – when, you, when you've been and uh, Coach Holtz has established the program, you get guys that fit into your system that, and, and they're older and they're, you know, they're going to come in here you know, with their experience and, and that, that's going to be a big part of, of this game. I know, uh, obviously, you probably put you know, the past couple of seasons in the rear view, but Maryland did happen twice in the season opener. Yeah. How do you make sure these guys are ready? Well, we, we, to me, it's taking the experiences that happened and, and, and trying to piece those together. And, and I think our kids are aware of that. But we try not to dwell on, on too much of that. Just like, you know, you could bring up the Sugar Bowl. It's like, okay, that's great, but that's over with. So, but we as a staff, obviously, have, have really addressed that part. And, and whether that is the way that we, we go about, you know, certain times of, you know, two weeks before we, the opener, and that's all that's all decided. But you know, you're gonna see, you know, a whole bunch of brand new guys that that weren't in, in that mix beforehand. So we 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 explain to them, they're aware of it, but we don't wanna beat it up. I mean to me every year is gonna get a little bit better around here. Talk through the, through the scrimmages, uh, just getting to see your guys in kind of a game like situation. Yeah. What did you like and what have you tried to since that second scrimmage really focus on to clean up? Well, I like the physicality. I thought in every scrimmage that we came out we played really, really hard and we were physical. And I, I think that's the part when you get in especially into week two or week three when we fall camp and it's like, Hey, we're going out here again and we're going at it for a hundred plays or you know, fifty each, you're always worried about that as one side of the ball going to just be like, okay, this is this is not our day. And I did not see that on both sides, which is really cool. That's a really good sign of a good ball club is when they're competing out there, especially when you get into practices like 13 and 14. So that's the part. I, I, like, I like this group because this group like and like really likes to be around each other. There's, you know, a lot of these guys were kind of recruited together, you know, Jeff and and Malcolm and Brandon, maybe a little bit outside, but they're like kind of like the big brothers now. So they keep that kind of crew that we've recruited together, and then they're around there to kind of guide them through, like, hey, this is how you do it. You know, we're in our, our senior seasons. This is how you got to be professional. These are the things you have to do. So, um, but they like playing ball. You know, and I think that comes into like, this is new for them. Or you might get a you know a four year guy that goes out there during camp and it's like all right you know I got to get myself ready for this you know this season and t instead of having guys like Delhi and Joe that are like I got to prove myself every day or I'm not going to be able to to go out in the field so that newness to me has been really refreshing for us as a staff and I know Tom had talked about it beforehand you know there's a whole bunch of eager guys out here to try to prove something to us every day. Mm -hmm. I know Tom said penalties, and I think he said corners playing the ball better with that. So that he made yeah, it. but you know, it's, it's, it's like anything else. I mean, when you get into it, and, and like I said, it, we, we don't want to get into bad habits, but it, you know, you go against somebody for 21 days, it's going to get a little chippy, you know what I'm saying? So it's, you know, those things that go into it. And then, you know, obviously, you know, we're, we're pretty dynamic at receiver too. Some of these guys, I mean, six, seven guys and going after a ball is easier said than done too. So it's, uh, you know, those things are all correctable. I think we're starting to, to get ourselves back into game mode of, of the discipline part of it. That's going to be a big thing in the first games. I think you saw that in the Miami game where, you know, things can get out of hand. You know, it's, you know, taking yourself out of fall camp mode and going, it's like, hey, boys, this is like one of the 12 opportunities we have. You have to have a different mindset. So we're starting to address that now. What do you need to see from Cook? Well, I, I just think it's just the consistency. That's the biggest thing. I, you know, and, uh, you know, one, if, if you don't have a great play, it's okay, man. It's, you're out there. That's, that's on the coordinator to be able to help you out 
if, if things aren't going great. But to, to me, he's a super talented guy. Um, but that position can be a little bit lonely at times. So if, if you do give up one, it's fine. Move on to the next one. We're all going to make mistakes, myself included. Uh, let it go. And, and like, like we kind of say around here, just if you go 0-1, just don't go 0-2. It's, it's, you're, you're okay. Balance it up, win the next play, move on, and, and keep competing. But it, once again, all four of those guys, Cook included, have, have really, really good fall camps. I'm excited to watch every one of those guys you know, get on the field. How, how, would you, how do you prepare the young guys for the adversity? I mean, obviously, you don't know what the adversity is going to well, be. Well, how do you try to? Yeah, I mean, we can't simulate 100,000 people. We can't simulate, you know, somebody in the stands yelling at them. You know, we can't do that. But we can make practices, uh, you know, pretty difficult in terms of the kind of the, uh, I, I don't want to use the word stress, but the expectation of performance. I think we can do that in practice. So, those kids, when they go out in the field, I think, um, you know, obviously, you know, it's their first time doing it. And a lot of these guys are going to play way more plays than they ever did. But we hope that our training will at least, I don't think, eliminate them ever. I don't think. I think that's the kids, us talking to the kid that says, hey, listen, on game day, if bad stuff happens, let it go. We're with you. You've earned the right to be on this field. So don't think about the negative part of this. Be, be completely positive because you, you've really earned the right to fail because of all the stuff that puts you in the position to be a starter. So go out there and play free, put your foot in the ground and just play. Devondre Sweat, yeah. what, what's impressed you? Uh, his athleticism. I mean, we kind of knew, and I think with Yancey and his, and his group, when they, when they get him tr trimmed down a little bit, I mean, he's twitchy, he's physical, he's long, he's, I mean, He's a guy, I, I know this part of it, he popped more for Herm early on in camp. Like we were like, okay, young guy com comes in here, let's see how he does, you know, the, the stretch. Of, anybody can be really good in the first week of uh, fall camp. But, you know, Herm was on that really quick. He was like, hey, we need to see this guy a lot more. And, the, and as we got him in more and more, he's really, really performed well. You're going to see a lot of him on Saturday. How would you describe Jalen Green's demeanor? Well, I think he's pretty calm. You know, I don't, I don't see Jalen get rattled a lot. And I don't see them, you know, I think he's even kill. And I think that's the, the part of that position you kind of need to be. There's times where he's, you know, he'll make great plays and I think he'll get up and he'll celebrate, but then he'll let it go. So that's a good trait to have as a corner, somebody that not too high, not too low, kind of in between and just keep playing. But he's, you know, Jason's done a really good job with him and he's been super consistent throughout camp. We kind of got a taste of what Joseph Sack can do last season. What did we expect to see this year? Well, I think, you know, physically he's, um, he's much better. So I think you're going to see some plays where I think maybe last year he got knocked around a little bit. And then I think you're, you're going to see some of the dynamic stuff that he can do. I think he's, uh, he's really good at, at pass rush. I think there's some things that he can do, um, you know, in the run game too. So we're all excited about it. But, you know, it's like anything else you know, kind of taper down the expectations with them. And I always just tell them, like, hey, whatever you do in practice is exactly what you're going to do in the game. So don't, don't be hard on yourself. Don't overthink things. Just go out there and do what you're trained to do. Coach, got time for two last ones? Coach Herman had actually challenged Sam Ellinger to not only be the offensive leader but the defensive leader. Uh, and that's something he said he's been trying to work on in the offseason. He's going to try to do that on game day. How does how did your guys you know gravitate towards Sam and how is he kind of a leader on that side of your ball? Well, Sam to me is like an honorary linebacker to be honest <laughs> with you. I mean that's what Sam is. I think that's the quality that we all loved about him without ever picking up a football and throwing it or doing anything from a quarterback standpoint. And Sam has always done a great job of cultivating team, regardless of. You know, like I told him, I think I told him and Shaq this, because Shaq to me is kind of the same way too. It's like, hey, listen, when we go to a team period versus each other, I want us to try to get after each other's butts, man. I, you know, a winner and a loser. But the second that Coach Herman blows that horn or that whistle to stop that period, we're back together as a team, and then we're, we're reunited again. So, you know, Sam is always welcome. I mean, our guys, I don't think there's a person in the locker room that doesn't respect Sam. You know, better yet, on the defensive side of the ball, I mean, that guy is everything about what you want out of a football player and as a human being, and he shows the grit and everything that goes along with what the expectation of Texas football would be. So, you know, Sam is, uh, 
you know, a unique guy. He really is. You know, when you can go into that and have your quarterback, if he wanted to walk into a defensive unit room, he'd be, he's, he's got an open invite anytime he wants to come in. People listen. And, you know, he, he, uh, he, if you just think about just all the stuff that, that got him to this point, you know, it's the one thing he's always had into him is that great quality, that I gravitate to you kind of thing. How's Roshan looking at a, at a running back? And you can talk a little bit about him. That decision to have him go on that side of the ball. Yeah, you know, he's done a great job. You know, he's a he's an incredible athlete and very selfless right now. What he's doing, you know, we've obviously been well documented. We had a couple guys get just dinged up and which which had to miss a day or two of practice. And he said, "Coach, I'll I'll go there." You know, he wants to play. He's a competitor. He's driven, and uh, you know, we put him back there one day, and all of a sudden he made some guys miss and running 21 miles an hour and we're like hey looks pretty good and he's he was having fun so I think uh he realized where he uh fit at the quarterback room he said coach I'll do whatever we need to do but uh our future plans for him obviously are still quarterback are you putting Keontae or Jordan on a rep count no or Saturday? no so so you are going into this as if they're 100 percent Yes. Okay. Because I was gonna, I was gonna ask, do you, do you change philosophically how y'all want to attack a team, if you know that a certain area, like running backs, are kind of dinged up? No. We're no. Good. We're okay. Good. What have you seen from Louisiana Tech defensively? Uh, you know, obviously they have a new defensive coordinator, so it's been hard to just watch their film. We watch their film to kind of pick up personnel, but we've had to backtrack over the past couple of years where. Uh, Bob has been at and try to just, you know, muster together different film and be able to look at some of the things that he's done to try to give our guys a, an idea of what we might expect from them. It's so it will be a learning experience going out there right away to see exactly what they're going to do. Is he a big pressure guy? Has not been in his career. Um, but again, you know, time's always been changing. So. I know when he worked with Sam for a while has been the decision making. He obviously went, you know, ten games last year without an interception. How has that portion of his game has improved? Has it even elevated from what you've seen? Yeah, he's still doing a great job. You know, he's uh you know, he's just become an advanced level, you know, even more so. Not so much his decision making, but even contributions, you know, just hey, I like this or hey, what if we did this type thing. Um and obviously, he, he's the pitcher, right, in the, in the battery. So if I'm calling a curveball and he doesn't want to throw it, it's probably not a good thing, right? <laughs> so we have good communication that way. I think his, he's done a great job of protecting the football. He's done a great job of ball placement. I think he's learned what I could fit in windows, what I can't. When do I need to leave the pocket? When do I not? Um, his game just has elevated a lot. How much feedback? Do you accept, you know, from him? I mean, is a it? lot. Okay. I mean, a lot. All these guys, even Casey. I mean, I, you know, I tell you guys before, right? I coach it. I never invented it. So, like, if if those guys feel good about a play, it's probably going to roll off our tongues a lot easier than it is if they don't like the play. Last time we talked to you, Jake was, you know, at that point where the freshman brain turns to oatmeal. Yeah. But it sounds like. <laughs> he's he's got quite a bit. So yeah, how did he handle it? How has he handled it? How's he absorbed it all? You know, he's uh, it's been he's handled it great. Let me let me start there. It's never easy. You know, he's away from home. Number one, number two, he's in the lineup. He's going. We're facing To's defense. At, they're all over the place, and um, you know, and then and then all of a sudden it's hey, you're in a punt return. And he's got a lot. And I think he's done a great job of handling all of that. I'm very impressed with him. Does he still make some mistakes? Yeah, I mean, all of our guys do. But I like where he's at. And I, and I think he's got a great demeanor about where he's at. I think he has a good feel of where he's at, too, right now. Tim, what, what motivates Sam? And maybe in a specific term, not he wants to get better. I mean, obviously, I'll right, there, right. But what, what really motivates him? I just, I think, number one, who he is. Right. I think he was raised that way, very competitive. Um, he wants to be the best, right? I mean, so he's always driven. He's always trying to learn. I mean, he's up here all the time, you know, watching film or he's watching. If he's not with me or 
Jordan or GA or he's he's hey Shaq let's let's go through this what are you calling here and he's sitting down with him and he's grabbing Devin Duvernay hey on this I expect you to run the route like here I mean it's constant from the guy constant and uh, that that's what makes him so unique as a player is there a difficulty being the quarterback at Texas for him or do you think from day one he's kind of embraced you know I mean all the outside I, stuff I, I do think I do think uh, there is I know that's real, um, but I also think it drives them. It drives them, and it drives them just to, for a variety of reasons, right? The naysayers to prove them wrong. The, the, hey, this is my team. This is what I've always wanted. I mean, there's a there's a variety of different things that motivate them, but I definitely think that's part of it. Coach, what led to Devin Duvernay moving to the slot? I mean, he didn't drop a pass last year. The ones that were catchable. And he's so explosive. What what led to him being moved to the age? I, I think it was an area of our of us offensively, uh, traditionally in this offensive system, that guy's been a big time playmaker for us. And we usually look for some guys with speed in that slot position. Last year when you had LJ and Colin, you had to make room for him. So there was a little bit difference, a little bit different style maybe, um, of kind of what we did. We ha and now that we have them there in the Z's or other, or other outside where he played, we've developed some depth there, which we didn't have. So the strength of the Z position, the lack of depth at the H position or slot position kind of started saying, hey, Devin's a senior. He's played two years at Z. Let's give him a try, see if he can handle this in here. If he does well, we'll leave him. If not, we could always move him back because he's played that position for two years and he did really well in it. How would you grade Parker's pass protection on a scale of one to ten? You Maybe know, at the beginning and where it is now. Yeah, and, and Herb could probably give you a better, um, but th I don't see a deficiency. Like when he's in, I'm not like, oh no, Parker's in. He's he's like all the rest of those guys. You know, they do a really good job. They work and. They, there's a lot of communication that takes place with those guys passing off twists and you know all the different blitzes and stuff that we see constantly. We prepare our guys offensively by playing our defense. There's, there's probably a pressure we haven't seen. We've seen them all. So, you know, kind of going back to the first question, what if they blitz us? I don't know, like, okay. I mean, we saw it every day for Eight, you count spring and fall, I mean, 25 straight practices of nothing but bringing the heat. And I think we'll be okay. How are you feeling about Kid Brewer now? I love what he's doing, you know. I mean, um, for his whole audience. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he had a great camp, everything about him. I'm very dependable, trustworthy. Mm -hmm. He's got great hands. I mean, great hands. He's, he's a, been a pleasant surprise, one we don't talk about as much when you talk about all that receiving core that we have and the skill guys in the backfield. But... I tell you, he's had a really good camp. I like what he's doing. You Last year, we saw how relaxed Sam is. I mean, there were points where he was bobbing and set to music on the field. Right. How does this offense feed off of stuff like that? Well, they, we feed off of Sam, right, number one. And that's, you know, my message to him consistently is be you, right? Don't, you don't have to be, like, the biggest thing I tell him, not, he doesn't have to win us any games. Just go out there and do what you do, which is what? Distribute the ball to our guys. The right guy on time. If you do that, the offense will take care of itself. Like, don't think you got to win games. You don't. And the more he understands that, the more confidence it is because he doesn't have the pressure of, I got to make all these plays. No, you don't. Just get us in the right play and get the ball to the guy. Like, if you do that, we're going to be good. And he plays with passion. He plays confident. And that, that shows. You know, that's just his demeanor. of, And I like it. When he doesn't play like that, I know something's wrong. What's your level of confidence if Casey has to play? So. A lot. I think Casey probably is one of the guys that has improved as much uh, on our football team as anybody. Probably one of the top four or five guys in terms of his improvement, development. He's extremely talented. Is he at the mental level of Sam at this point? No. He's probably where Sam was closer to last year at this time. And he'll continue to grow. But he's a worker, loves the game. Um, I'm really pleased with what he's done. Where did he have the most to make up? Was it protections? Yeah, just learning the game, learning the game. You know, it's it's different situational football, protections. You know, how am I protecting myself versus this look, 
versus this look. But hey, on you know third and one, I know you threw the fade ball wide. It's third and one, like don't do that. Throw this one or run it because then we can go for it on fourth and one if we don't. You know what I mean? So it's, sometimes it's like understanding. Oh yeah, I got you, coach. You know those type of things. You guys, you guys chose to. Uh... Redshirt John Burt last year, mm -hmm. but now you know I can see where he's on the depth chart now. What improvements you know has he made? I know some it's Brennan as far as the depth charts goes, but what improvements has he made? Well, just again, same thing. You get in the system, right? Understanding the game, he's gotten better at understanding the game. He's gotten better at um, just. I think that's the biggest thing. When sometimes when you take a talented guy who goes out there, and if he has to think, he can't play as fast, right? So how do they play where it's just become reactionary? The more they play, the more they're in a system, the more they can just react and let their instincts take over. And that's what you see with John. I don't know that there's a one specific area you could look and say, wow, his route running got better or wow. Yeah, it did. Why? Because he, he can now focus some more on coverage because I know what route I'm supposed to run. You know what I mean? Or the quarterback checked this play. Now I know what I'm supposed to do where he might have missed it last. So, I just think his development overall as a receiver has gotten better. Did I break it back to Casey real quick? Does he need to take meaningful snaps? I mean, do you feel like you want to get him in the game at some point? I always you laugh. I, mean? I laugh about Casey. He's a, he's like unshakable, like the dude. I try to rattle him all the time in practice. He just smiles at me, which pisses me off. But <laughs> he does. I tease him all the time. I mean, he gets off the bus throwing the ball. Like, I mean, he just. Because it is. I'm like, you warm? Yeah, coach, I'm, I'm ready. Like, I'd love to see him get in and get some meaningful reps, but I also got a lot of confidence in him. If we need to put him in, he'll be ready to go. Andre Coleman, did he bring anything, you know, in the quarterback run game from, you know, K-State? or? Yeah, I think, you know, him and Larry, you know, those guys have been great. You know, they just have a different perspective. They've come from different programs. They bring in – they may have different ideas. They may see things at practice. They may have a different word, signal, communication, route, whatever. And so it's been good having those guys here to be able to provide some input and some feedback. We bounce them, hey, what do you think of this? Is this good? And so I think that part's been good. There might be a wrinkle or two in there with Could be. a little bit of their yeah. Tim, I know a lot. You know, Tom's talked a lot about you know, the old line, kind of being that top six group, the five guys you open camp with, the Parker. Is there anybody right. outside of that top six that you feel is close to being somebody you can depend on to, to put in there? Well, yeah. I mean, I I feel like I mean Christian Jones has made improvement. Reese Moore was having a really good camp, um, and and suffered a little bit of an injury there. Um, you know, those guys. I see Rafiti get consistently getting better and better. You know, they're. There's some young players um, that we have that you can see in them, like they're going to be really good players. They may not have gotten as many reps as some of these older guys, so yet they haven't developed quite as quickly. But you can see some good things with those guys. How do you make sure your players aren't you know, underestimating Louisiana Tech? I think the biggest thing right now, it doesn't really matter who we play. I mean, it really doesn't. It's about our guys. It's about going out there and putting our best on the field, our best players with the greatest effort, best ball security that we can, and play as hard or fast as we can. So we focus on us. We don't really focus on them. We don't even talk about them much in terms of who we're, who we're trying to play. It's all about us, taking care of the football, playing really hard, finishing blocks, finishing drives, all those types of things, because we feel like if we do that, we're going to have a chance. You said, Number two last one. you said after Maryland, maybe he didn't run Sam enough. He ran it seven times for 30 yards. Do you, when you look at this game plan, do you say? We well, I think, I think uh, kind of going back, maybe early, just I know he likes to get in the flow of the game, getting him in the flow of the game. So whatever that takes for him, we sit down and we talk a little bit about that. Maybe it's some easier throw, like, it all depends. You go back and think, like, I think of Maryland, his first completion was like the 60-yard bomb to Devin, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, maybe there's some things to get him going, to get him a better feel. Um, but that's kind of between us when we sit down, hey, what, what do you feel like you want in this game? What do you need? And then we kind of go from there. Did you or, or anybody, um, you know, so much was made last year about LJ, you know, carrying guys down the field. 
did you say to anybody on this team, hey, this needs to be you? This you need to be the guy that gets gets it going. Not really. No, I don't think that we've ever or talked to anybody. I, I'll say this: I think Colin Johnson did a great job this year leading that receiving group because mm -hmm. there's a lot of young players. It's him and Devin, and I think Devin too. I, there's a side of Devin that that's come out also that we really haven't seen. But those two guys with the Brennan Eagles and Josh Moores and Jake Smiths and Jordan Pounceys and it goes on and on. Avante and mm -hmm. those guys. They're learning from these other, these two older guys, and even John Burt. John's done a nice job, and he wasn't with us in spring, but this goes all the way back to then, and they started building that foundation for those guys, and that's been that's been cool to see. Mm -hmm. You know, how's he's Brandon, seen, one? How's Brandon after the, the elbow? Good. He's, you know, he's out there. He's running around and catching balls. So.